Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, I'm really excited because always when we have a podcast, um, typically the favorite ones are when we interview someone who just completed the toolkit or flight school or coaching, and they kind of talk about their journey. And so today's roundtable is going to be dedicated to just such a person, Kyle Nab. Kyle, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So before we start talking to you, Kyle, I want to just introduce everyone on the, on the round table. Bearland Aaron. Bearland, how are you? Doing well. Hey, Kyle. We got the no nickname, Eric. No nickname, Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. Good, good. And then, of course, the breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, are you excited? I'm very excited. This is going to be a great podcast. You know, we can also talk about uh, the, uh, the ladies' man night show uh, on the mastermind group. That was Night pretty cool. Night yeah, cap. we actually had a great uh, first show, and uh, so... And this is going to be continuing every week. So this week is Wednesday night, but we'll talk about it after. Yeah. All right. Great. And then, of course, we got the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you feeling? I'm good. Yeah. Everything's going well. Can't complain. And of course, you know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. LandMoto.com. And of course, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, PostingDomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Hey, Mark. How's it going? Good, good. So let's, let's properly introduce Kyle Nab. Um, Kyle started with the toolkit, right? And then, Kyle, did you go into flight school or, or straight to coaching? Um, I went straight into the quick launch coaching program. Quick launch coaching. Okay, so um, you invest in the toolkit on April 26th, uh, yep. 2017. You had already owned a property since... October 10th, 2016. So it had been about six months. You bought it for 3,900 in New York uh, State. And then you sold that property a month later. Um, after getting the toolkit, the toolkit opened your eyes to seller financing and allowed you to sell that property for 14,100 terms. Then you bought another property in Utah for only $600. Um, 30 days later, you sold it for 10,000 on terms, all thanks to toolkit. Uh, <laughs> I see that's written there. Mike, should I keep going on this, or should we just talk to yeah. Kyle about it? Uh, uh, I feel like I'm I'm stealing Kyle's thunder. Well, we're we're stealing it a little bit. I mean, give him, let um, him brag for a little bit, Mark. You're not yeah, yeah, Kyle. That's a good intro. What, what happened then? What happened then? Kyle, what happened then? Let's let's just talk about why. How did you even find me? Why did you get the toolkit? And then what happened once you start executing? And so let's let's take us through the highs and the lows. So I'll let you take take from there. Then you guys can jump in and ask questions. All right. So uh, I guess I first found you um, on one of your earlier podcasts, actually. Um, I love listening to podcasts. I think it was way back when you and Duran Frazier were doing your Land Geek podcast. And I listened to like every episode of that. Um, I guess I got into land investing through just what I heard from that podcast. Um, so I guess it was enough to buy a property. So uh, that first property that I actually sold, I actually sold it on vacation in Punta Cana. So that was pretty cool. Um, I was just emailing back and forth to a guy and he ended up buying it on terms. Um, I never knew you could sell a property on terms. That was pretty cool. I was always advertising the cash price, cash price. And six months went by, I was getting scared. Um, found you, decided I needed some extra help. And uh, I was talking to Mike Zeno and he said the toolkit would be a really nice idea to get into. And uh, he helped me out big time there and got into that. And ever since then, I've just been blowing up with all the deals and everything. It's been amazing. Wow. What's, what's been your favorite deal so far and why? Um, definitely the one that I only bought for $600. Um, the toolkit really ca uh, taught me that you can, you can get these properties for a couple hundred bucks. Like I always thought, Oh, you had to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for property because I live in New York state. And I mean, you guys know property isn't very cheap here. Um, 
so once I bought that property, it was, it was pretty crazy, like a crazy experience buying something for $600 that I knew could probably sell for 10,000. So, um, I mean, I, I put it on the market for that high price. I was like, there's no way I'm going to sell this thing. And what do you know, 30 days later, I get a guy that wants to offer me, I think I got like almost $500 down. So I, I mean, the property was paid for on the down payment. And then I was, I mean, he's been paying me ever since. I think I've made about $4,000 or $3,000 so far on that property. So it's pretty crazy. That's insane. That's insane. And then um, how did you sell it? Did you go through Craigslist or uh, Facebook or the neighbors? Um, so that was purely uh, Craigslist on that one. Um, it actually blew up and I got a lot of hits on it. But before the toolkit, I was posting on Craigslist with one Craigslist account. Um, it was my personal one. I was getting flagged all over the place for reposting. I was renewing ads, all the things that Scott tells us not to do and posting domination. That was actually a huge step two was getting posting domination. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I made that sale on Craigslist and I've actually had some, a lot of success lately on Facebook. So you can sell property anywhere. Wow. Wow. All right. I'm going to let, uh, Mike ask you a question. I feel like I'm talking too much. Mike, what's your question for Kyle? Well, Kyle, I'd like to know, I mean, we're hearing the success. What's, what's been the most difficult thing so far and, and, and most rewarding that you've overcome? I mean, what, what, you know, what, what part is really, you know, everybody's got their own personal challenges and, you know, we all have certain uh, attributes about us that make certain parts of business easier than others. I'm curious as to what was the most challenging for you and, you know, maybe most rewarding overcoming or, you know, anything along that line. Um, so probably the most challenging thing in the beginning was just convincing myself that I could invest all this money in the property and make it back somehow. Um, I guess in the beginning I tied up a lot of money in, into property acquisitions because maybe I didn't buy it the right way. Well, I know I didn't, I paid a little bit too much. I started with more higher end properties, but Ever since that $600 lot, it's, it's been going good. I've been trying to invest in smaller properties to build up my, my uh, capital. But I think the biggest thing that I struggle with even now is choosing the area. I mean, the toolkit helps a ton with picking a county because they, I mean, Mark gives us a list of all the counties that work. Before that, I mean, there's hundreds, thousands of counties in the United States. And I had, it was so hard to just pick one. So once I had that list, I kind of just dove into one and I mean, you get results. Um, people have gotten results in those counties and I also found results. Uh, I still struggle even today picking specific subdivisions in those counties, but that's, that's just me trying to be a perfectionist and finding the right. perfect area. You know, I, I think it's a great backstory too, Mark, is that you may not remember it was Kyle, but we were at boot camp. I don't know if it was Vegas. I don't remember where, when you, you and I were talking on the phone, Kyle. And I was at one of the boot camps, and I'm like, I'm going to get you a smoking deal in the toolkit. And I went and I found Mark. And I said, Mark, I got this guy, and I want to give him a great – I really believe in him. And you're like, yeah, do it, do it. And then the very next boot camp, right, I was talking to you on the phone, and then that's when you had made the deal in between. So it was, it was, it was really – I found it really uh, personally rewarding because, you know, I was working with you and, and uh, you know, and went and kind of uh, – you know, rallied for you and got you the smoking deal. And then you took it and ran with it and got a big touchdown. And it was, it's just been really, I think, exciting on that end, especially for me just to be involved in that small aspect of it. Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, <laughs> I can't thank you enough, Mike. You've been so helpful along the way. And Sounds like team Mike. I'm yeah. Here. <laughs> Even in that. <laughs> well, I think Tate's going to have something to say about that. <laughs> I sure. know. I'm just – I'm no. team Mike and team Tate. I facilitated an introduction to the master. That's what I did. Listen, I listen, just... I've, I've, had, I've had the pleasure of uh, working very closely with Kyle for the last uh, few months now. And it's, it's been amazing to see the transformation that he went, went through. At first, he came into this land investing business knowing that it worked, but he hadn't fully committed himself to it, right? He had in the back of his mind that, yes, I can buy land for – 20, 30 cents on the dollar and flip it and make some good money. But I, I don't know, maybe it was like four months ago that it just kind of clicked for him. And he had that aha moment where he went, 
I can do this for the rest of my life. And it was really inspiring because, you know, Kyle and I were about the same age and, you know, it's kind of cool to know that Kyle is going to be able to do what he wants when he wants for the rest of his life. Right. All he has to do is keep doing the basics of this business and it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be really interesting to watch him grow and see what he does with it, where he ends up. So I'm excited. I'll definitely say that I'm, I'm a little bit proud and very proud. So, <laughs> but Kyle, I have a question for you. You know, we've talked about, you know, some of the hardest things about it for you. We've heard about some of your good wins. What was the first thing that you automated? Um, the first thing that I automated, I believe, I think it was due diligence. Um, I w I'm weird. It, should, it probably should have been list scrubbing. Mm -hmm. But I, for some reason or another, I kind of enjoyed doing that. Um, but it was due diligence. And yeah, because I was still buying the county lists at the time. Okay. The counties. I think that was the first thing. But right along the way, probably at the same time, I also automated uh, getting the list. And so those were my you, two major things. So when you automated the due diligence, I mean, was it uh, liberating? I mean, did it allow you to focus on other aspects of the business? Were you able to devote that time to marketing? What happened? Yeah, it was great. I actually, my first due diligence was automated with uh, the Land Geek VAs. It was a quick plug for Mark. Um, but I mean, they're great. I literally just send them a parcel number and a day later, I'd, I have all this information that I'm able to use for marketing and to see if I want to buy the property or not. And it's, it's pretty insane that I don't have to do any work and it's, it's very affordable. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's inspiring to hear that, uh, you know, you, you took the action, you got it off your plate immediately and, you know, freed up that time. So Mark would be proud. I, I am proud. I'm, I'm looking at some of these numbers, like, you know, he got into coaching and then, you know, seven days later, he makes a cash sale for $11,000 profit. Um, that's <laughs> what, what deal was that? Where was that Kyle? Was that, that was such a sweet deal. That was so sweet. Um, let's see if I can remember, right. I think that was, it might've been something that I bought earlier. No, that was the one you got from that mailing. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I bought a, that was actually, that's, that was a unique property. It was, I bought two 160 acre properties in Utah um, for 3,500 bucks. I think it was somewhere along those lines. And uh, I sold them for cash and it was, it was crazy. And I mean, these properties were in the Salt Lake desert, flooded swamp land. I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe like I got these people contacting me after I bought it saying, Oh, you know, your property's in the Salt Lake desert in some swamp land. I was like, Oh, is it? And then I just posted it as an investment property. And what do you know, a land investor, like not like us, but someone that wanted to own a lot of property. It's like, Oh, 320 acres for only that amount of money. And he bought it right away for cash. And I mean, that was right after I bought coaching and, I was so worried when I got into coaching that I wouldn't be able to afford it. But a couple of days later, I paid it back and then some. So yeah. Kyle, um, kind of going on from there, you said you were a little bit afraid. Um, what, what kind has been your biggest fear uh, going into this, considering you kind of already had bought property before? Um, and, and how did you overcome it? Like, how did you get past that? the fear of getting into coaching. Okay. Or is that what you were asking? No. Well, just in the whole process, like what's been your biggest fear with this business and how have you overcome that? I guess my, my biggest fears have been buying property and not being able to sell it because I mean, the toolkit and coaching Tate, everyone has been telling me, Oh, you got to keep buying. You got to keep buying. You got to build up your inventory you'll always be able to sell it. And I guess that was the scariest part because I didn't know if I could sell it. I knew I sold a couple lots, but I didn't know if I scaled this thing, if I was going to be able to sell everything. And they kind of opened up my eyes to investing into these smaller properties where I can make my money back on the down payment. So it's not as risky. Um, and 
that was amazing. I mean, that's really helped me a lot to scale everything is just buying properties that are more in my budget. Yeah, Great. Scott, you know, do you, do you find that's a very similar fear from your flight school clients? Well, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a similar feel fear, no matter where you are in the, in the system, right? Like, I mean, that I, I will tell you, like I bought a property. Um, I broke a cardinal rule, which is no HOAs. I bought one there and it took me about 18 months to sell it. And, you know, it, it really just, it was a time thing, right? Like it was, it was me waiting the time. And unfor unfortunately, the guy made one payment. We haven't heard back from him yet. But that said, if I can find another guy like him, I'm all good. But I got some money on it, right? And so worst case scenario is I just keep uh, getting my investment down and down and down. And next thing you know, the land is free. But I think, I think that, yeah, from flight school, from really everybody, it's like, man, what do I do with this stuff? It's, it, is it ever going to sell? And it becomes kind of like that, you know, once you kind of do it and you kind of get one of those properties like the swampland, like Kyle was talking about in the middle of the Utah, that someone actually buys, bam, all of a sudden you're golden. Then you start to realize the potential. Yeah, yeah. So Kyle, at boot camp, um, what were some of the, the highlights for you? Um, I actually haven't attended a boot camp yet. Mark, but oh, you haven't. Oh, I thought no. you were at boot camp. Oh, okay. I'll be in so, Vegas though. And we talked about in Vegas. While I was right. at boot camp. I was at boot camp. Oh, in New York, okay. and we talked two separate boot camps. We talked on the phone one before we bought the toolkit, one after. Oh, you're, you're gonna love boot camp. Yeah, I'm and really then, looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah, because everybody wants to know how you made the $21,500 cash sale. You want to talk about that deal? Yeah, that was uh, that was one of the first properties I bought actually. I think I bought it. Oh, no, it was the second one. I bought that one. I literally spent one of the last pennies I had on that property. Uh, I had to take money out of an investment account. I bought it for around 10500 sold it for 20, it was 21000 something around that line. And I mean, I it was- shaking his head. I mean, that's just amazing. He's saying it so nonchalantly. I think mean, that's crazy. <laughs> And that, that property, I was actually having trouble marketing it. And after uh, I went through the system and I figured out, hey, I should probably have more than one Craigslist, Craigslist account and I should probably be following these rules and actually trying to advertise this thing properly. Uh, once I did that, I mean, I had people wanting to buy it all over the place and I kept lowering my price on it lower and lower. And then after I got the toolkit, I raised it back up to the top price. And I decided that maybe I can make some money on this thing. And I ended up doubling my, my investment, which was pretty awesome. The guy called me up one day. He's like, Hey, I want it. I'll pay cash for it. What are we going to do for escrow? And I was like, Oh my goodness, this is happening. <laughs> wow. Wow. Eric Peterson, what questions do you have for Kyle? We, we always like hearing your very aggressive voice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I was thinking, you know, maybe we could back up a little bit and, and you kind of briefly touched on this idea that uh, you own some, some raw land prior to getting the toolkit. So how did that come about? Was it just something you were interested in? Did it, had you just listened to the podcast and you're just like, I'm going to just try this without anything or you want to ex expound on that? Yeah. So I was, I was listening to the podcast. I heard, uh, I heard Mark saying something about, oh, we send out letters and to delinquent property owners and we send out, sometimes you can do postcards, but letters are probably better. And I, I mean, I didn't have much money, so I decided to do the postcard route and I literally sent, I think a thousand of them out to, it was Franklin County and New York state wasn't on the secret list at all. Um, I mean, I sent those out. I got some, some people messaging me back. Like, are you crazy? You want me to sell my property for this much or whatever. So I finally got a guy and he talked me up and I ended up getting it for that $3,900 mark. And then the other one for 10,005. And it was, a, it was a ton of money for me to spend at that time. Like I'm, I was 22 years old working as a, a waiter at a restaurant, like 
five hours a day. I mean, I didn't have that much money. So that was pretty crazy. My, my parents were skeptical. I didn't even want to tell them what I was doing. Um, I mean, one day my mom and dad were like, Oh, we saw you took a bunch of money out of your, your investment portfolio. <laughs> like they probably thought I was selling drugs or something, but <laughs> um, I mean, when I first sold that property, it was, it was, it was great. It really um, showed them that it worked and everything. But uh, back to your question. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I did that and the postcards worked not as well as letters as I'm figuring, I figured out later on, but I mean, I got that property and the system, it, it worked from what I studied in those podcasts. I mean, I was a podcast junkie. I listened to every, every one Mark was ever in and <laughs> I mean, it was helpful. Cool. I hope you're not sick of my voice. <laughs> no, you have a great voice. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. See, see how I, I, I lobbed that up for Kyle. Very, swish, swish. you know, the, yeah, my insecurities are really coming out now on this podcast. So um, Scott, do you have any questions for Kyle? Kyle, uh, did the podcast get better when I joined it? Just it kidding. That's no, just kidding. It's okay. So you don't have to answer that. Cause I don't want to get my feelings hurt too bad by a bad answer. So don't answer that question. Kyle, what, um, you know, like you, you, you talked about like a lot of success is there. I think the biggest success that I'm hearing that you've had is not necessarily with the properties. It's a mindset, uh, success, right? Um, you know, it, I think sometimes we, it's easy for us to talk ourselves out of success, but once you start believing, like you said, once you start believing that you, you could do it, then all of a sudden you start having that success you talked about your aha moment. What, what helped your mindset shift? Cause in this, in this whole evolution of this podcast, I've heard about your, I've, this is what I've seen from it. This is my takeaway. So what kind of assisted with that? So, I mean, it's one thing to listen to you guys on the podcast and okay, here's there, there's this Mark Podolsky guy and, and, and Scott Todd, and they're making a bunch of money land investing um, but it's another thing to actually meet you guys and, and, and talk to you on podcasts and the community, the mastermind group. I mean, all of that, just surrounding yourself with people that are successful. And I mean, there's, there's so many levels in that mastermind group that you can see there's people, there were people like me just starting. There were people that were more experienced. There were pros like you guys and just seeing that it actually works and, and knowing that you guys are making money doing it, it just, it basically just told me that there's no reason that I couldn't do it if I followed the system and, and really put all my effort into it. Yeah. What, what advice would you have for somebody listening to this podcast and, and they want to, you know, duplicate your success? Um, I would have to say just really just take your time go through, if you have the toolkit, go through the material, don't rush, don't try and reinvent it, follow the system. Don't like, I tried to do postcards for a while. Don't just do what you guys do. Don't try and reinvent the templates, use the original templates. I'm still using them today. Um, and just, you, you just have to do, do it like the system shows you how to do it and stay calm and focused and have that goal to get to the next level and you'll, you'll be successful as long as you stay with it. And what about, uh, the one-on-one -on -one coaching with Tate? Is there, is there, uh, anything that like, who do you think would be a good fit for that? I think anyone would be a good fit for that. As long as you've went over the toolkit. Um, if you go through the toolkit and you understand it, coaching is literally going to 10 X everything you do. Um, I mean, it brought me from selling one property a month, which is fine. You can make a lot of money doing that, but it, as like a hobby, it brought me from doing that to being able to sell three properties in one day. Um, I mean, Tate's really been a ton of help helping me scale this thing and make it uh, a career instead of a, a hobby. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people, you know, with the toolkit, they now they've created a new job for themselves, and then once they sort of graduate into flight school and one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, now they can see, oh, wait a second, I can actually make this a business. 
in this, you know, a passive income machine. But it's, it's one of those things I think that is hard to kind of wrap your arms around until you hear, you know, that's why I think boot camp is so powerful because, you know, you, you're in the room with people who are doing it versus um, just, you know, sort of what we talk about on the round table. And I think, uh, you know, your story, Kyle, can really help, you know, motivate people, inspire people to get to that next level and really move the needle in their businesses, knowing that, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, Eric or Bearland Aaron or Tate that can do this. Um, it's, you know, like Scott says like in flight school, you know, follow the recipe. Um, don't start, you know, creating your own dishes, if you will. Scott, is that what you say with the mini bat? <laughs> I pull out the mini bat and I just tell him like, you know, I can't, Mark, I can't reveal everything here. I know you want me to, but I have to hold some back. But basically right. it's about following the recipe. I can't go through my exact words because. Okay. Okay. Then when they get to flight school, they're going to be like, I heard that before. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I have to, I have to hold back. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Eric, when you hear, you know, Kyle's story, I always like to say comparison is the thief of happiness. So what would you say to someone listening to this that might be comparing themselves to Kyle and be like, well, what am I doing wrong? Yeah, I think um, when, when we tell our stories um, and the, you know, different successes we've had or different properties we've sold, um, I think it's important for, for everyone to not compare themselves to that because, you know, what, the way to look at it is more as inspiration, right? To see that there's success that can be had in the business. So, you know, you may not buy that property for $500 and, and sell it for 10,000 or, or whatever it is, but you may eventually, um, but more importantly, see that the model works and then put your feet on the ground and, and actually follow the steps and, and, um, you know, if you're continually working the business and following the process, you're going to get there. I like it. I like it. Mike Zano, what, what, what's your biggest takeaways from some Kyle story? Um, I just, I just love the fact that he, you know, he took a chance in the beginning and, you know, based on limited information and took massive action and I think that set the stage right from the beginning. That's why when he and I stayed in contact, I knew he was going to do so well with Tate because he is, he is a, uh, just a massive action taker. You know, when someone is not afraid of taking massive action in this business, great things will happen. I think a lot of people get really kind of held back by, you know, being afraid to do something, even when they're told that this is going to work, but still they have to make that decision. So I just think it points to what we always talk about, massive action. It rules the day uh, in this business and he wasn't afraid to take it and he's reaping the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. No, and you know, I don't want to be completely Pollyanna about the business. I mean, look, it's a simple model, but nothing's easy. So Kyle, I'd love to rewind the tape with you and, uh, and see if we can just talk about a recent struggle and, and yeah. how you dealt with it. So, I mean, this isn't, it's not super recent. It was right around the time that I bought the toolkit. Um, I, can't, I can't say for sure if it was before or after, I'd have to get my facts right. Um, but it definitely told me that I was making the right decision buying the toolkit. So what happened is I was looking to buy some properties down in Arizona and um, they were super cheap in the subdivision. I sent out some offers to the area. Um, I offered these, this guy $600 each for two properties. Um, he accepted and I, I knew I could sell these things for 15,000 a piece. So I was super excited. Um, I went through uh some quick due diligence, everything looked okay. Um, I was doing it myself at the time. Um, wasn't super experienced. I think it was before I bought the toolkit and, um, I decided I was going to buy these properties. I bought them, uh, sent the guy the deed to sign recorded with the County didn't pay him yet, which was a good thing. Um, then once I started marketing these, I had a buyer that was going to buy them through title. Um, I had them pay for the title insurance. They went through and the title company told me uh, it was kind of a slap in the face. They came up and emailed me and said, hey, did you know there's $15,000 in liens on each of these properties? And I was like, oh my God, 
I'm going to lose everything. And then the, the company started calling me. They're like, yeah, we're actually just going to foreclose on you or something, or we need these properties paid off before we can sell this. Um, so I was freaking out. I, I sent a text message to Mike asking for help and he was more than helpful. Uh, he, he told me exactly what to do. He said, Hey, you know what? You haven't paid the guy yet. Why don't you ask him if he'll take the properties back? And I mean, I was freaking out. I was like, there's no way he's going to want these properties back. He probably scammed me. He knew he had these liens and he just wanted to get rid of the properties. But I mean, it's the power of asking. I asked him, I told him, Hey, can you take these properties back? We noticed a lien on them. Um, we did sign with a warranty deed. Um, and it looks like you weren't all truthful about them. And the guy took the properties back. I never paid for them, and we were all good. I quit claim, quit claimed them back to him. I mean, oh, that, that story had a happy ending. Yeah. So I Luckily. really saved myself there. Wow. That's incredible. So Mike, when he was telling that story, were you starting to sweat? No, because I already knew the outcome. And it sounds nothing like Team Mike. I'm just hearing it. But it's Team Tate, I know. But it's Team Mike, then Tate. <laughs> team Mike, then Tate. <laughs> He's con team. converted. Once he, you know, I knew once he went to Tate, it would be all Team Tate. But I had him for a while. It was Team Mike for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and Kyle, are you using um, the uh, LG Pass program? Yeah, LG Pass has been amazing. I mean, I, I couldn't scale this thing without it. Um, I mean, before I just had like, I was using documents on my computer, trying to keep track of properties. And I, I was like forgetting which one was which and LG pass really helped organize everything. It's been <laughs> team Mike, <laughs> but <laughs> it's been great. I love LG pass. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Scott is, uh, is really working on improving that even more, uh, with the tabs. So we're really excited about the, uh, the up and coming improvements and uh it's gonna be really cool scott are you are you ready to reveal or no is it, are, we, are we gonna wait for a boot camp uh no i mean we can i mean we revealed it at boot camp we can do it again the um the cool thing about uh the new lg pass is right now you've got some silos you got silos between mailing uh due diligence and closing those are three separate silos so you have to continue to move the property down and then if you find something like on the, um, uh, on the closing side, like let's say that you entered the, the state incorrectly, like the state abbreviation. Let's say that you, know, you put in NE thinking that was Nevada when in fact NE is Nebraska and you go to print the deed. Well, today it's going to print a Nebraska deed and then you have to go back all the way to the mailing side, correct that and then come back and you're like, well, I don't understand. And then there's some fields that are duplicate fields. So what we've been doing is we have been chiseling away and we now have this cool tab design that basically allows you to, when you're in a record, if you're in the closing, it doesn't matter. You can just bounce right back over to that specific property's record and uh, see it, correct what you need. And it's on the fly, go back, hit your deed and you are off to go. So it's nice to have everything in one compact record. So we continue to chisel away at all of our users requests. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. By the way, I'm, I'm reading, or I'm almost done with this book, which I don't recommend um, because it's so depressing for me. It's called The Glass Cage. And it's all about the downsides of automation, which is my favorite word. But it talks about how, you know, like airline pl pilots end up getting complacent. It starts to erode their skills. Um, you know, the ethical dilemmas of self-driving cars, how, uh, you know, hunters, that used to, you know, really know the areas. Now they're relying on GPS and they don't intimately know their areas anymore. And so um, I, I almost, I mean, not that we planned on doing this, but I almost think that there's a huge benefit in, in making sure that people go through uh, the toolkit first and then flight school and then opening them up to LG Pass so that they don't get sort of spoiled with it. And, you know, if something goes wrong, technically they don't have their wits about them. Um, so I think that's, that's sort of the way to go with almost anything with, with, you know, automation is not be too reliant on the technology, which is really weird for me to say is, is a huge technology geek, but. Hey, Mark, I, was, I have to tell you, I was argue. 
I have to tell you, like the other, the other day I go flying and um, I, I was, uh, okay, all right. it, sound, it sounds kind of bad, but it was a Friday. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take the plane out. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to lunch somewhere. So I, um, I decided I'm just going to go north to some little airport I'd never heard of, North Florida. It would probably take me about two hours to drive there. I'm like, I'm just going to fly there. There's a restaurant at the airport, you know, like right outside the gate, highly rated according to the, to the website. It was okay. And um, so I fly up there, but on the way there, I decided I was going to try something new. I decided that I was going to try to use the plane's autopilot, which is really, really cool because, you know, like you're flying, you get the plane set up, you're like autopilot. I had never done anything with autopilot before. I'm like, Oh my gosh, man. How do you, I'm not even sure how you get the autopilot off, but I'm going to do it anyway. What's the worst that could happen? I just end up somewhere like farther away. I don't know. So I'm flying autopilot. I get it going. And then I'm like hands off and I'm just like looking around like, holy cow, the plane stand the right altitude. The plane is like going the right direction. Mark, this is the first time in like all the hours of me flying that I've ever used autopilot. And it really kind of freaked me out because I'm like, man, what happens if I forget how to fly the plane? So then as I'm coming back, I did autopilot for a little bit, but then I'm like, I'm taking it off because I'm like, I, I, I got to make sure I know how to fly the plane. And uh, it was really kind of that same kind of experience, the depressing side of it, because I know pilots use it all the time for autopilot, but man, I felt a little weird about doing it. Yeah, that's, that's really crazy. That's really crazy. Well, we're at that point, guys, uh, for the tip of the week. And as is now the new standard. The guest, the guest the, has to give it. Does the guest have to give it? No, I, I just made that on the fly. Look, look at Zano. He's happy. So first, actually, forget it. No, no. If it was Eric's time, it would be the guest. But since it's Mike Zano, <laughs> let's go. Let's, uh, maybe maybe, just ask maybe Kyle. Kyle wants to give the tip. We should Kyle, do you have option. a tip of the week? Um, I could give you guys one if you want. I don't know how good it's going to be. But. Well, it'll be great. We'll do it. Okay. We won't, <laughs> so, uh, we won't, uh, we won't talk bad about you till after. Oh, yeah, no, you can't talk bad at all until after the podcast. All right. But, uh, yeah, so I was looking for, uh, unique ways to advertise my deal of the week. Um, and I noticed, uh, sometimes every day there's like a new national holiday. So I found this cool website called nationaldaycalendar.com and it kind of gives you like the unique national holiday for every day of every month. And there's actually a couple for every day, which is pretty cool. I noticed uh, national horse day or something is coming up so I can send out a deal of the week. Hey, um, buy some land for your horses. It's national horse day. (laughs) That's a, that's a great tip. That's a great tip. Well, Kyle, I think your mentorship for this podcast has been phenomenal. And um, do you have any final words of advice or encouragement for somebody that might be on the, on the fence as far as getting the toolkit or going into coaching? I would just say, if you're hesitant about getting the toolkit, don't be go all in with that. Um, coaching, just uh, make sure you're ready for it. Make sure you go over the toolkit. If you've gone over the toolkit and you're serious about this business, coaching is going to take you to the next level. It's going to 10x everything you do. And I highly suggest uh, going all in with it. All right. I love it. And so for those of you that want to learn more about coaching, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with Mike or Scott Bossman, and uh, they can kind of walk you through the uh, the different programs and and find something that's a good fit for you um, for sure. Um, and then of course, with all the one-on-one coaching flight school is included because we really want to make it coaching. Um, Berlin, Aaron, are we good? Yeah, Mark, I think we are good. What do you, what do you think of this format? We, I, I like it. Yeah, I really like it. It's, um, it's great for everybody to hear, um, somebody new with the, uh, you know, with the coaching and everything else and to share some of their experiences because I think there's probably people on the edge that really need to know, you know, regular people just like them are doing this and, you know, on their way to financial freedom and that they too can be right there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Mike, Eric, Scott, does it bother you that Kyle and Tate are so young? (laughs) 
Comparison? Not at all, man. Not at all. Happiness, Mark. Why? Why? Why would that bother us, Mark? Does it bother? I, I just, I, I just have regrets. Of, like I didn't start till I was thirty. Well, I mean, like Mark. I mean, like yeah. I think we can all have, like, especially the older people. You know, like regrets like that. But good for them. Yeah, I mean, Kyle, what are you gonna do like, when, you're, when you're our age? I don't know. Hopefully, uh, doing it. Whole thing will be automated, and I can just do whatever I want. <laughs> Yeah, what is that? What do you want to really do? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, I enjoy going snowboarding, and I've been doing that a lot more lately. And I mean, I don't, I don't work my day job anymore, so this is I have too much time in my hands. I've been actually sleeping in too late every day, so I need to start waking up earlier. <laughs> That's the first. Yeah, thing. I know. I mean, it's so funny because we don't we don't talk about the downside of having all this time. It's like you know, you almost feel like an extra on the set of Cocoon because the only people that are out and about during the day are like the elderly. It's like, you know, was that, was that Wilford Brimley on my hike? <laughs> That's great. Is that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad Bear Light Air liked that joke. Tate, Tate's so young, he doesn't even know the, the movie Cocoon. No, I never heard of it. <laughs> Come on. Is that, Who's, do you have to use one of those uh, VCRs for that? Oh. <laughs> oh, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I want to I dig down into Zeno's comment there. That's it's what flash. I was at. <laughs> Mark, that's that? what they're laughing at. They're laughing at you, and then they're <laughs> laughing at you're not getting that they're laughing at you. Because hey, I've like seen some, Cocoon, though. Because like you're, you're like some senile old man, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh now I see it. You know what? There's there's nothing worse than thinking like your joke really was strong. <laughs> it wasn't your joke, Tyler right? Yeah, yeah, see. yeah. I mean that is. I I am in a shame spiral right now. Scott, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna have to end this this podcast. All right, let's go ahead and end it now. And uh, ready, guys? You know what to do. Wait, 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 One, wait, two. Wait, wait, wait. Well, uh, the final plug, what? You gotta get the final plug. Like, look. We need the only way we're gonna Kyle Nat back on the podcast. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. You you do that part. That's your that's your you role. Gotta subscribe. You gotta rate. You gotta review the podcast. Um, send us a screenshot of your of your your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're gonna give you the ninety seven dollar passive income launch kit for free. Put in the subject line. Mark is still funny, and we will even throw something else you know else out because you know I thought that was a good joke. It it was Maybe a good joke. Back. It was I started laughing at you, Mark, because your joke was pretty funny. And then Zeno threw that in there and it just put me over the top. So yeah, the bear got excited and, you know, there's laughs and uh, out of control. It was interesting that you brought up Cocoon because there's been times I have been mistaken for Steve Gutenberg back in the day. So it's kind of interesting. Oh. Who is wow. Steve Gutenberg? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Wait ben Aff. <laughs> Mike, right. Mike Zeno, don't you need to ask Alexa for a quote of the week? No, I got over the top of my head. Do you need a quote? No, we don't need a quote. Yeah. Okay, ready, guys? Here we go. Yes. One, two, three. We got to end this thing now before, like, one, two, three. Let, Let freedom. freedom. Wait, 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 wait. What wait, happened? Wait. What? what happened? Was Kyle not doing Kyle's it? Kyle's not doing it. it. I was doing it. Oh, I didn't see it. So he, right. ready? Here we go, Kyle. We it's all you. you. Solo. One, two, three. Let let freedom, freedom ring. 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 Uh, all right. Little Kyle, Kyle, I'm never. Did we that. start yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you guys doing this, Kyle. I really appreciate you. Um, I know Tate's got lunch plans now. Tate, what are you doing for got lunch? The flu, doesn't he? I do have the flu, but I just found out thanks to Kyle's tip today is National Pancake Day, so uh, I hop for lunch. Right. That's the, actually that sounds I, really good. I hope IHOP pays you, Tate. To no, eat there. IHOP's good. Yeah. I'll be in. IHOP's be able to good. They got yeah. crepes. They got incredible crepes at IHOP. I'm gonna second that. They yeah, make- IHOP is good. I mean, it's it's comfort food, Mark. Sometimes I, I used you to eat a little bit. Dennis Miller used to do like a little stand-up joke about the international house of pancakes. Like, what makes IHOP in the international house of pancakes? Would you like the sausage link or patty? Like, it was like really funny. 
It's no well, sushi burrito, but it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's, it's good. Color. What's a sushi burrito? Oh, Kyle, the West Coast. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Kyle, sign up for the uh, the boot camp at thelandgeek.com forward slash boot camp. Get a sushi burrito. Get in there. Did you oh, already sign up? going to keep him away. Yeah, he signed up. Oh, good. All right, that's awesome. So he finds out lunch is a sushi burrito, then he's out. <laughs> are we? Are we all gonna? Yeah, are we all gonna be there? Yeah. yeah. So it's gonna be great. It's gonna awesome. be great. I mean that 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 room's almost full. By the way, yeah. I hope the social mixers before the sushi burritos. I don't know Why? if I want to be fish breath. I don't know. Good man. I feel like if you pan left right now, we'll see hanging carcasses of deer and moose. And <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> oh, you got to pan right this, to see that one. This is all I have to say. Team Bearland. Team Bearland. That's awesome. Did you uh, color that yourself? <laughs> you- <laughs> oh, oh, this, oh, oh, no. That, that's his participation trophy. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Everybody gets an award. I'm wounded. We play for keeps here. That's right. That's that. That's the boomerang for the the joke that I thought I got a good laugh out of not getting it. Boy, that was that was ego crushing, Mike Zeno. Brutal, brutal. brutal. I mean, I I can't think of anything that's like even remotely close to that. As far I guess, well, I mean, I oh, you know what would be remotely close to that is if you're single. And you think that like a really pretty girl is looking at you and then you go up to her. Right. Hi. And you're like, hi. She's like, Oh, I was just looking at the menu behind you. <laughs> well, wow. Gosh, so you have experience. You, do you have experience yeah, with that market? I never had that. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Remember that, remember that scene in swingers? It's like I'm, getting weird, I'm getting a weird baby vibe. National awkward moments day. That's, not, that's, awkward moments day. that's, like, that's like my day every day. How can I still, I can still <laughs> land with that? Yeah. Wow. I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, this is nice. Roxbury. All right. Yeah, sure. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Kyle, please come back on the round table. And then, uh, and then the, uh, the night show, too. Okay. Yeah, Mike, have, have Kyle go on the night show. Yes. Hey, my, my, uh, my, anybody seen it? I saw a little bit of it. It was great. Loved it. Scott, did you like it? I did like it, Mike. That means a lot. Only, only thing, only thing I know is that people were like, stop with flight school. We got to go to the nightcap, man. They were like j- jumping, bailing my flight school. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Mike. It's all right. Yeah. I'm like, as what? long as you guys are going to go see Mike, it's okay. It is recorded. We put that yeah, but I mean, they didn't want to miss it live. Come on. They're, they're like bailing. It's like, come on. Would you rather listen to like Scott go on and on at flight school about, let's see, we were talking about uh, automation at the time, uh, which this week we're talking about uh, financial management with that group. So I'm sure they will be riveted to their seats this week. They won't leave. I'm, we're going we're gonna to start a little later. That's what we'll do. That's okay. It's okay. We'll stagger start it. 10, 10 p.m. is good, man. Like that's, that's late. Well, it's only 10 p.m. on the East Coast. That's okay. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. I think we... <laughs>